morning, y'all, and welcome to my mom's bathroom. <laughs> Today, I am doing the most requested video I have had all year, showing you how I style my hair. Now, I thought it would be just kind of boring if all I did was blow dry and curl my hair for you, so I'm gonna share with you my gray hair transition story from the very beginnings to where we are now. Let's go. As you can see, I've already washed my hair and I have it up in one of these lovely little turban wraps, which I absolutely love. Um, if you don't have one of these and you have long hair, I would highly recommend it. It does take a lot of the dampness out of the hair before you dry it. But first, I need to wash my face. And this is not a sponsored video today by anybody, um, but I do love my proven skincare system. So I'm going to wash my face and put some moisturizer on before we get started with styling my hair. I am sure that my gray hair story is probably pretty similar to a lot of you out there in that I found my first gray hair sticking out of my head in high school. Like I don't even think I was 16 yet when the first gray hair popped up. And you know, I didn't do anything about it then because I was 16 and I still had, you know, really thick dark hair for the most part. And I, every once in a while I'd have this gray hair come up. Well, as I got into my early 20s, that started happening more and more often. And by the time I was 25 or 26, I started coloring my hair pretty regularly. Regularly? <laughs> That's a hard word to say. I would get the box colors from the grocery store and I would just do it myself. Eventually, when I started making more money, I started getting it professionally done. But, you know, I've been coloring my hair since I was around 25. When I was 28, I had my daughter and I started doing a lot more experimenting with my hair at that point. Now, I had no trouble experimenting with super short haircuts, longer haircuts. Like I would wear my hair pretty much multiple different ways. I mean, it's hair. I've never really cared about doing something drastic and not being worried that eventually I could change it. In saying that, I've also been pretty much every single hair color. I mean, I know I'm mostly silver blonde now, but I I tried out blonde back in my early 30s when my daughter was super young. And uh, yeah, it did not flatter me at that point. So it was a little, that made me a little nervous about going gray. After that, I kind of stuck to reds and browns darker browns, caramel highlights, sometimes going super, super dark, almost black, but not quite black, black. But you know, just the whole range of colors. I I have not done purple, green, or any of the fun colors yet. Now my daughter has, and it looked beautiful on her. I have not done that yet, but as I get more silver, I might start you know, adding in a little streak of purple or something, because I do think it's pretty fun. <laughs> I always told myself that I would know when I was ready to go gray. And I, for years and years said, oh, I'll be in my late fifties when I decide to go gray. And I, you know, maybe then I'll decide, or maybe I'll decide to keep coloring my hair forever. Well, in the summer of 2022, if you've seen in some of my past videos, I ended up spending the summer in Alaska in a in an RV. <laughs> so uh, that became really, really challenging to keep coloring my hair living in a tiny little RV with paid bathrooms that we took showers in. And ultimately that is where I was like, I'm just done with this. <laughs> I figured that worst case scenario, if I didn't like how my hair was growing out silver, then I could always recolor it. And after staying in Alaska, I took a trip to Portland and visited several of my old friends in Portland, three of which had already made the decision to go gray themselves, and they looked so beautiful, so beautiful. So shout out to Lisa and Leslie, if you're watching this video, because you guys definitely are a huge inspiration to me for letting go of coloring my hair because there was part of me that was thinking, well, when I get home, I might color my hair again. So after visiting Portland, I decided, let's just give it a try. I spent the next couple of months coloring in the skunk stripe because it was, you know, about an inch to two inches long, but not, not enough silver up there yet to really justify doing anything else to the rest of the hair. And finally, in October of 2022, 
yes, 2023, yeah, 2022, I went to my stylist and I had her um, pull out the color as much as she could and then do a wash over the silver. And we have been working on this now for over a year. She's done two two sessions of um, pulling the color out from where I had been coloring my hair for years and years. And that's that's what you see is most of the blonde part. And then my silver, my real silver is probably maybe about six inches down now. So that's, that's where we're at. I have started maybe considering doing a chop to get to more of the natural hair, but it took me so long to grow my hair out long that I'm not sure I'm ready to give that up yet. But who knows, I could get a wild hair up my butt and you know decide to do that someday. But for now, we need to blow dry the hair. If you guys missed the video I did on the Tymo hair dryer, that is what I'm using today. I love their digital readout. Um, this thing is so nice and lightweight and small and compact and you can really adjust how the temperature is blowing on your hair. Love this thing. Again, not sponsored, just something that I am so happy to have and use on the, well, I don't wash my hair daily, but on the weekly basis anyway. As you can see, I just do a quick rough dry of my roots to make sure all of the close in part of my hair is pretty dry. And then I'm gonna go through and do a quick brush dry. <laughs> I don't know if that's what you call it. And you may have noticed I don't put any products in my hair. I wash and condition my hair and I do a deep treatment once a week, the Lador um, Hyaluronic, I think, deep treatment. I did not do that today because I've already done it this week. Um, but I am going to finish drying my hair I don't put any product in it. I am not <laughs> much of a product girl, as you will see from the rest of this video. So I'm gonna finish drying my hair now, and I'm gonna set it at a lower temperature. I'm gonna set it at 140 to dry it with the brush. Woo! The towels will be required. Now that my hair is completely dried, and really that took like, I don't know, maybe five or seven minutes, I am going to go put on some clothes before I do the rest of this and give my curling iron a little bit of a chance to heat up. So I will be right back. So I probably should explain why I am in my mom's bathroom, and that is because it's much prettier and it has a lot more natural light than my bathroom does. My bathroom's like filming in a cave. So I wanted to do it somewhere where there was a lot more light and I wouldn't have to adjust the color in uh, post-production as much as I usually do when I film in my bathroom. So we're gonna get to the fun part, which is curling my hair. Now I probably should have said at the very beginning of this video, I am not a professional beauty person at all. I, I am very uh, low maintenance for the most part. Well, maybe I'm a middle maintenance kind of person. I'm definitely not high maintenance, but I'm definitely like to have a little makeup on and have my hair done. So I'm somewhere in the middle, like probably a lot of you are too. Uh, but yeah, I don't have any professional experience. I learn a lot of what I do from other YouTubers. In fact, uh, Gabby Glam Girl or Glam Girl Gabby is one of my absolute favorites. And if you haven't checked her out yet, I'll have her channel linked below so you can check her out. She does a lot of stuff for women over 50. Um, there's uh, so, so many great, um, hot and, Angie Hot and Flashy is another one for makeup stuff. She's amazing, but but Gabby really, for the hair stuff, she she's fantastic. So, curling my hair. <laughs> I actually use, wait, I'm gonna take a sip of coffee. I actually use a curling wand instead of a curling iron. And the difference is that it doesn't have the little clippy thing to hold your hair in. Now, something I learned from Gabby is that you don't need to turn the temperature all the way up for your hair. There are very few hair types that actually need to have the hottest heat on their hair when they are styling it. And this is, 
this was a game changer for me. Like I, I've been curling it at the highest heat for so many years and I just started uh, playing around with what low temperature I can go to that it'll actually still hold the curl. So I am currently curling it at around th between 325 and 350 instead of all the way up to 450 and it still seems to do just fine for me. So how you use this curling wand. First, I'm going to use, let's see, a hair clip. So I'm gonna pull most of my hair up into a hair clip. And you'll see that I kind of do my hair and my makeup all sort of coordinated together. I'm gonna put a little top knot up here and get that out of the way. One of the things you do have to use when you are using a curling wand is a glove, because otherwise you might burn your hand, and I've done that a few times. And remembering, I can tell you, I used this curling wand so many times before I remembered that the glove needs to go on my left hand because I am right-handed, so it's the opposite hand of whatever your dominant hand is. Uh, I mean, I had so many times I put it on the wrong hand and then I'd start curling and I'd be like, well, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Oh yeah, sometimes lessons are hard to learn. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do is we do a downward twist of the hair, like so. And you wanna be careful not to burn your ear. <laughs> and I hold it for, you know, just a couple of seconds and then I let it go. And it does kind of twist as you are putting it on the curling wand. Oops, I'm trying to make sure it doesn't fall off of the sink. Okay. And then I just do like little, probably two inch sections, I would say, sometimes smaller. If I want tighter curls, I'll do like a smaller section, like a one inch section, but it does take longer. Obviously, the more times you're having to curl, the longer it takes. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's up to you. But depending on the event or the occasion, sometimes I do want, you know, a little bit of a tighter curl. And then we're gonna do this side. And you can see, you can see how much darker my hair is underneath. And that is all natural darkness. That's not um, anything that's been colored. And that is uh, one of the things that my hairdresser has said is that it'd be kind of cool as the gray grows in because I'll have the dark kind of low lights on the underneath that are kind of fun. So like I said, I'm still, still considering chopping some of it off, but I don't know. I wouldn't look for that to happen anytime soon. Maybe if I really decide to do it, it would probably be in the summertime when I want less hair on my head. <laughs> and I'm wearing a lot more ponytails. All right, so there is the first layer done. And you can see this first one I didn't get, I didn't probably hold on long enough, but I'm not too worried about it because it's the underneath layer that's going on there. So we are going to get another layer ready to go. And then I just divide it out like that. I just use my thumbs to kind of pull up the rest of the section of hair there. And I'm sure if most of you are out there and you've been curling your hair for any length of time, you kind of do the same thing, especially with thicker, thicker, longer hair, <laughs> you definitely need to do it in sections. Okay, so we're gonna do this layer. And the front sections, I kind of do a little bit smaller than I do the back sections. Like I'll do like a couple of one inch sections up here and then they get bigger as I move around the back of my head uh, because I can't see the back of my head. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not too concerned about whether that has super tight curls or not. <laughs> so sorry if you see me looking up, but I'm looking at the mirror to make sure I don't end up burning myself. And uh, yeah, so I am talking to you guys, but trying to curl my hair at the same time. It's like chewing gum and walking, right? Just work my way around. And as you can see, I work from the front to the back. So I'll do one side and then I switch to the front and then do that side. So I am curious how many of you guys are in your own silver sister gray hair transition period. Are you, what are your tricks that you found that have made it easier to do? Did you just go ahead and do a big chop or have you been letting it grow out and doing the, uh, you know, the stripping of the color and the, um, the wash like I've been doing, the purple, you know, getting the, gosh, what is it called? I'll have to put it on the screen because I can't remember. I'm having menopause brain today. 
<laughs> the you know when you get the the wash put on it so it stays more silver and it doesn't turn yellow. I do use purple shampoo and I'll show that on the screen too, the ones that I'm using. I haven't, like I'm not die hard on any particular purple shampoo yet. Um, I'm just buying stuff at Walmart and using, like L'Oreal I think is the brand that I'm using for conditioner. Probably when it gets more solidly silver, I'll probably invest a little bit more, but right now I'm just, just doing a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know, for all the years that I've spent, you know, over a hundred dollars a month on my hair and now I'm kind of like, I don't want to spend money on any money on my hair. I mean, that is one of the reasons that I decided to go back or go natural is to save the money. I mean, that was a lot of money that I was putting out every month to get my hair colored. And it was, I mean, the roots started showing in less than three weeks. I mean, it was probably two and a half weeks and you could see a nice little, silver strip going on at the top of my head and uh, it just got to be time wise and money wise it was a huge investment and I, I will say that part of going gray I am absolutely embracing 100%. <laughs> okay I think I got all the little pieces done. So once I have this layer done I like to go ahead and take a moment and put my my foundation on, although I don't really use, I use, let's bring this up here. That's a little easier. I use the L'Oreal Magic BB Cream. And if you've seen any of my other makeup videos, I think I have two other ones out there, you'll see that this is what I use pretty much all the time. And I use medium, I'll use the dark color in the summertime when I have a tan, but medium for the most part works because I've got some rosacea and some coloring, but it just evens out the skin tone. It doesn't, you know, it's not big coverage or anything. And that's all I really want is to, is to make it look even. I don't need to be piling on a whole bunch of foundation on my face every single day. Now, for most of my videos, I am using um, a foundation. I use uh, L'Oreal. I have a thing for L'Oreal, I guess. True Match, I think, is the name of the foundation. And I do like that a lot, especially for the coverage that I want for doing the videos. Because, you know, cameras, lights, all that type of stuff, it's, it's a little less forgiving. And this video, I'm probably not going to look my best because I'm doing more of a natural look. But, you know, it is what it is. This is what you guys wanted. <laughs> being my authentic self for you guys. So I put that on and <coughs> I'm also gonna take a second to put my eye drops in. These Lumify eye drops, oh my gosh, you guys, these are like magic. If you have found during menopause, like I have, that I feel like I am walking around looking like a total stoner every single day that I don't put any eye drops in because my eyes are so red. I never, ever used to have this problem. I also didn't have issues with the purple under my eyes either. So clearly there's a lot more blood that goes to your eye area as you go through menopause, I guess. I mean, I haven't done any studies on it, but it seems like that's what's happening for all of this color. But the Lumify eye drops, just a couple of drops in each eye and they get so white, like so white. Love, love, love these things. Probably not great to use multiple times a day, but they are fantastic at least once a day if you want to clear out that color in your eyes that isn't very attractive. I know. It's just what it is. Now, I am debating whether I'm going to use this today. This is another thing that uh, Gabby recommended, and I've seen in other videos, this Maybelline eraser. Now I had so many different colors to choose from. I kind of got analysis paralysis when I was picking this out. Um, I, let's see, I can't even tell you what color I ended up going with. It's like a number, I think. It's 122 is the color that I ended up going with. And I'm, do I want to use this today? Well, why not? Because we're doing a video. I just got to figure out how to get it open. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to be right back. I got to figure out how to open this. All right, it's super helpful when you put on glasses and can see what you're doing. <laughs> Get this little strip off of here. By the way, I got these glasses uh, during the Black Friday sale. I got like six pairs of new reader glasses for like $10 because mine are starting to fall apart. And I noticed that I have moved up in the strength that I need for reading glasses. 
so sad. <laughs> so I'm now at like a 2.25 and I got a set of, like I said, a set of six, I think for $10. And these are great. And if you have a small face, these fit really, really well. I'll have everything that I'm using today linked below in the description and in the first pin comment if you're at all interested, but I would highly recommend these. And they're kind of, they've got a whole bunch of different options that you can choose from for the six that you want. I, I liked having a pair of seafoam green glasses that match pretty much my walls and my mom's walls. <laughs> so we're going to use this uh, eraser concealer. And I think I got to like prime it a little bit to get it going. Let's see. Ah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> You just gotta twist it until it comes out. So I got a little bit on my finger now. So I'm gonna just dot that under here and then a little bit under here. And we'll see if this is the right color for me. It looks like it might be a little on the dark side. Oh, well, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not a huge concealer fan. So y'all let me know what you think. I think it covers up the, the purple pretty well. Do a little bit on the top of my nose for some of that red. Oh, not too bad. We'll use this in the future and I'll give you, I'll give you my feedback on it <laughs> as I use it more. <laughs> so I just, I'm going to do that and now I'm going to go back to curling my hair. So this is, this is how I do it in real life. I kind of go between the hair and the makeup and the hair and the makeup to get it done. Probably should take this as my thumbnail picture. <laughs> As I get to these uh, top layers, I do kind of go a little bit smaller on my sections. So again, these are pretty much going to be mostly one inch sections, sections, <laughs> and I'll hold it for a little bit longer so that it's a little bit tighter curl. Usually I am listening to a podcast when I'm doing this and I absolutely love My Favorite Murder. I don't know, are there any murderinos out there that watch my videos too? I, uh, I love true crime stuff, true crime stories especially. One of my favorite books of all time is Devil in the White City. And that is, if you haven't, if you are a reader and you have not read that, that is a fantastic, fantastic book that parallels the Chicago World's Fair along with a serial killer that was going on at the same time as the World's Fair. It is an amazing, amazing book. And I might have mentioned before that the book I'm reading right now is a book called The Sisterhood, and it is about women in the CIA through the years, which is pretty fascinating. I've been really, really enjoying it. It's it's pretty thick. <laughs> it's taken me a while to get through it, but I find it I find it so interesting. And you know, these these women, I mean, they are incredible personalities that joined the CIA through the years. So if that, if you are looking for something to read, that is another fantastic book to read. But like I said, I'm usually listening to a podcast and it's usually something to do with either murder, true crime, or nutrition <laughs> and mindfulness. I know it's a huge, a huge mix of things that I like to listen to. I am always, always looking for new podcast ideas. So if you guys have some podcasts you listen to that you really, really love, um, especially more story in, story oriented podcast. Let me know in the comments below because that is that is something I am listening to regularly when I'm walking, when I'm cleaning the house, when I'm getting ready in the morning. I just like to throw on a podcast and and go about my day and learn something new while I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm not usually talking. That's why I think this is taking longer than usual. And I do, like I said before, I only do my hair like once or twice a week. So I don't mind spending a little bit more time on it when I do it because I won't do it again for a few days. So it's okay. And the cur these curls will last for a couple of days. Now, I do wear my hair up in a loose bun when I sleep at night because Otherwise, the length of it will sometimes get wrapped around my neck and I feel like I'm choking myself. As you've seen, I am sure if you follow me over on Instagram, you will see me with that loose bun up on top of my hair quite often because that's what I'll do when I get to sleep at night. And a lot of times in the morning, I'll leave it up there until I'm getting ready to go do something either to film a video or actually go out and do something with some other people. But the curls will last if you, uh, if you just leave them as they are, well, you'll see how I do, but as long as you don't brush them out at the end of the night, they will actually hold their shape for quite a while. 
Okay, so now we are gonna do the last little bar part, last little part of the hair, and then we'll finish up makeup. Let's see, make sure I've got my part. I do my part is sort of an angled back part, you can probably see. Let me show you down here, so if you can see it. Um, I don't know why I started, I have in the past done like a centered part, and I really haven't done a centered part this year. I was doing it some last year, but I've kind of not done it much lately. Maybe I'll try that out as we go to the new year, just to try something new. I think it looks a little weird when I do the tight curls with a center part because it gets super puffy around my face and it's a little, I think it overwhelms my face a little bit. I don't know, we'll try it. I mean, I'm all, all up for experimentation, right? <laughs> That's what makes, ah, gosh, I cannot speak. That's what makes life fun. It is all about experimentation and trying new things. That's that's what I live for. <laughs> Finish up these couple of little curls. I feel like I should be imparting some great wisdom to you guys, but I don't really have anything <laughs> else to talk about. Okay, oops, curls are all done. So I am going to, to finish doing my makeup, I kind of clipped this little section back like that to get it out of my face so I can finish what I'm doing. So for, let's see. <clears throat> Again, super simple. I don't do a lot with my makeup. I do like to use this little Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer to do like my cheeks and a little bit of contouring. <laughs> I mean, I don't know contouring is in anymore but I still like to do it under my chin and my cheek here because uh, I still feel like maybe it makes all of that look a little bit smoother and uh, firmer <laughs> especially the firmer part this little section right there so I do it there a little bit on my cheeks maybe across my nose and right up there around the the hairline there. I am loving, and you guys have probably seen this before, my little e.l.f. halo glow. It's just a kind of a pretty little, um, I guess, sparkly cheek color, but it's not a whole lot, and it's got a little sponge tip, sort of like the uh, concealer did, and I just kind of do it right along the top of my cheekbone, and then I like smooth it in or tap it in. I guess I tap it in along there. And I think it just adds a nice little pop of glowy color at the top of my cheeks for a fresh look, right? <laughs> fresh is what we all want to look like. Okay, and then last but not least, I'm going to do a little bit of eye stuff. I don't put any eye makeup on. If you can see how well those Lumify eye drops worked, how white my eyes are now, I mean, that's, I feel like after that, you don't really need to put a whole lot of color on. I do use the Waterproof Bambi L'Oreal. Again, I am not advertising for L'Oreal, but I use a lot of their products. But the Bambi Eye Mascara, and it is waterproof. I do it in just the basic noir. And I just do a couple of quick swipes of that on my eyelashes, both eyes. I do like to do this outer corner like a little heavier to kind of give the fake eyelash look. And yes, I know, I I am eternally grateful that I ended up with my dad's eyelashes because they they are they don't require a whole lot of work and I am incredibly lucky to have them. I know. <clears throat> Gosh, I got a little I need to drink more coffee. <laughs> and then I just go back over those with a spoolie to separate out the lashes so they don't look all clumpy. Although if I use the mascara right, it probably wouldn't clump up anyway. I use waterproof mascara because I was finding that no matter what mascara I used would always end up at the end of the day, I would have mascara down in the wrinkles under my eyes. And that's just, that's not what we need these days. And then lastly, I have a little bit of this e.l.f. Um, brow gel that I like to do because my eyebrows, <clears throat> I will say, being blessed with the eyelashes means that I've got some crazy ass eyebrows. <laughs> like they, I have so many hairs that are growing straight out or curling all around. So using a little bit of brow gel to kind of tame those every day is what I like to do. I also have to trim them up. I mean, I have had some almost two inch long eyebrow hairs that I have pulled out. It's just, 
it's crazy. I don't know where they come from, but all of a sudden they're there. <laughs> sort of like the little white hair I get right here. All of a sudden it won't be there for months. And then all of a sudden I have this straight white hair sticking out of my mustache area. I mean, well, getting older is so much fun. <laughs> So that is it. I will come back and put some lipstick on, but that's usually the last thing I do before I walk out the door. So with my curls, sometimes I don't do any more than do a little bit of a finger through like that. Not a whole lot because I don't want to mess them up too much, but I will just loosen up the curls a little bit around the face. And then otherwise, I sort of leave them to fall on their own throughout the day. I will put, if it's super frizzy up here, which today it's it's really not too frizzy. It's not super humid out today. So I'm not gonna do this today, but sometimes I'll put this Cantu Extra Hold Gel. I'll do a little bit between my fingers and then I'll just smooth the top area. Or if I get like something crazy going on on this section of my hair, which does happen, I'll get those weird little natural curls that happen there and I'll use it to smooth that out too. So let me go get some lipstick and I'll be right back. So today for my lippy, which I change quite often, I am going to use this Wet n Wild lip liner and I can't tell you what color it is right now, but I will have it linked below. I love the Wet n Wild lip liners because they are twist ups so you don't have to worry about sharpening on them. I will, at this point in my life, I am never buying another makeup product that has to be sharpened. I, they are all are gonna have to come being twist ups. Just go ahead and put the slip liner on. I do try to make my bottom lip, my lips are kind of thin, so I do try to make the liner help make them look a little bit bigger. And I kind of fill in with the lip liner a little bit. I don't just line it, I'll kind of fill it in. Today, I'm gonna to use one of my tinted uh, lip balms that I just recently got, the uh, Clignatic. Clign anyway, it was a set of four. And if you saw one of my previous videos, I think the one where I was talking about what I carry in my everyday bag, you will have seen me talking about these. I love how these feel and the colors are awesome. So, I'm just, and it gives just a nice little natural look to the rest of the makeup because it is, I mean, this is a basic natural look for me. And this is kind of my everyday five minute makeup look, although today's taken a little longer than five minutes. <laughs> but these, these things are awesome. I love, like I said, I love the way they make my lips feel and I think they look really cool, especially when you use lip liner with them. And that is everything. I'm gonna put on some jewelry and head out for the day and go visit my dad. I hope that you guys have really enjoyed this video and that you uh, now know how I style my hair. <laughs> Let me know if this is something that you'd like to see from me in the future. I, again, I am not a makeup or hair person, but you know, I can always do another get ready with me. And if there's a topic you'd like me to talk about, then let me know in the comments below. Again, thank you so much for being here. And if you're curious about uh, the way you really should dry your hair with that Tymo hair dryer, check out this video next.